It's nice to see everybody again. I haven't been here in a while. Um, I've sat in the back for a while, behind Mr. Sonnenblick and behind Mr. Cohen, and at times they seem to be kind of agitated. Um, there's something that nobody's mentioned. They're calling this a recreation facility, and it's not. It's a private club. A, recre a re recreation facility or a park is someplace like Oak Glen where I can go shoot hoops with my son. I can go hit baseballs. I can run around the soccer field with him. This is a private club, yeah. okay, which is fine. Uh, I think it's a great project. I, I've looked at it, and I think it's a great facility. I just think it's in the wrong place, okay? Um, I understand that it comes down to dollars and cents. Obviously, property in this area is much cheaper than on Route 9. I, I would say it's significantly so. Uh, the fact remains, uh, Mr. Krebs, uh, about four or five hours ago, very eloquently supported the project, and I, I respect his opinion. I disagree with a lot of people who talked about the tax advantages. I've seen in the 11 years I've been in Howell, I've sat in this room for 11 years at all kinds of meetings. I have yet to hear a developer say that their project was going to be financially beneficial to the town. I've yet to hear a developer's professional say there would never be a negative traffic impact on any project. Mm. Okay? And I'm still waiting for the rateables. I, I'm still waiting for the, the tax breaks for Lowe's, for Target, for Kohl's, for the new stop and shop for Home Depot, I, I haven't seen my taxes go down at all, okay? So I understand that there's a lot of, it's a highly emotional issue because a lot of people aren't happy with where it's going and it's gonna change their quality of life, but I think what has to be considered is, there, there's two th schools of thought here. I understand the developer wants to make money. I, I really think that it should there's be stressed. Of yeah, well, there's many. There's not right, just exactly, there exactly. But what I'm saying is there, there has to be a consideration where, again, this is being proposed as a recreation facility, and it really is a private club that's going to cost a lot of money to join, and that's okay. I've visited several of these facilities over the last several weeks doing some research for a newspaper, and I've, I visit a lot of them, and most of them are in areas that are not, as what you would say, highly sensitive. They're on main ro more main roads. They're on areas where they're basically that's this street isn't even as wide as this room at this point. And to say that 600 parking places, or I think it was 850 with the additional area, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I know you guys will, but you're not going to tell me that when they have a busy, they have a big event, that it's not going to create a negative impact on the traffic in the area. 600 parking spaces going in and out in a given, say, hour or two is going to cause a problem. They told us that an additional 250 unit apartment complex on Maxim Southern Road wouldn't create a negative impact on traffic. Now, I don't care what formula you use, if you stand out there at the peak hours in the morning and the afternoon, it's going to cause a problem on a two lane road. That's a fact. I don't care what the calculation is, tra no traffic expert has ever said it's, it, it, it's going to cause a problem. There is no doubt that any kind of building anywhere Increases traffic a little bit. There's no doubt. Exactly. No matter no matter what kind of building on any road, it increases. It does. I mean, but part of what I always have to go off was is the traffic studies that mm -hmm. come from. I, I I really trust our police department when they go out there and they do unbiased traffic studies. And sometimes the citizens aren't happy with what comes back. I mean, I heard today about Longview people driving near 50 miles and passing school buses mm -hmm. and there may be a traffic study of 2,000 cars where they say less than 2 percent of the people were going over 40 miles an hour. Now those residents, I believe that they were telling the truth as they believe it. I, you know, but if a traffic study comes back with a thousand different people, less than 2 percent of them were going over 40 miles an hour, I mean they talked about it like it was a uh, a racetrack, Longview. Um, but, so I just have, when it comes to anything like that, I do trust our, our traffic study. Okay. The other thing is and, this. And, and so, and that's not really what I'm. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just here. trying to, to draw comparisons because I've sat in hundreds of planning board meetings and hundreds of zoning board meetings, mm -hmm. and it all comes out the same way. Uh, the other thing is this has been ruled on by the zoning board. It's been ruled on by the planning board, and it's been ruled on by the courts. I understand the developer has his right to come in and ask for this reconsideration, but it's been ruled on already. This should be a formality, and it should be done. The residents don't seem to want it. Well, I understand why the chamber wants it, and it is a good project, but not where they want to put it. 
Mm. It should be on Route 9. It should be on a, a really a main artery like that. And I think it would draw a lot more, it would attract a lot more people. And it would be much more uh, convenient. And it wouldn't be really be hurting anybody. This is going to negatively impact the people who live in that area. And it's, it's not right. Mm. Yeah, you, you would be okay with it if it was on 33. If it I'm was just, on 33. Because it's, it's, you know it's it, very it, close it, to it, 33. It is, but I it's mean, more much on Route 9, it's Route 9. You're not talking about, that road is like somebody's driveway, basically. Okay, so pretty much Route 9 would be the only place that you would say a recreational facility it should be. It would be the most convenient place okay. at this point. I can't dictate where they put it. I mean, again, I think it comes down to dollars and cents a lot of times. And, of course, the property area, area probably had to be cheaper, I would assume. Thanks for your time tonight. It's nice seeing everybody again. Thank you, Jay. Anybody else? Oops, constantly. Okay. okay. Come on. No, I didn't. Good evening. Thank you. I Name and address, please. Lori Allerton, 64 Vanderveer Road. I'm sorry. I guess I have no voice like Councilwoman Clark does. I've lived on Vanderveer Road now for 10 years. Okay. I hear your traffic studies. My children are, have gone through the Howell School Systems, graduated from Colts Neck High School, and now have now moved on to New Jersey Colleges. Okay. My kids have participated in sports from the get-go. Okay. I've gone to these sp other town sports facilities with my children as they play in traveling sports. I see the number of cars that go in and out of these private recreation facilities when they're running tournaments and such. Okay, you should see Vanderveer Road when there is an accident and Route 33 is closed. I can't get out of my driveway. It is bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. Route, my road, Vanderveer Road and Fairfield Road are considered main connecting roads between Route 33 and Route 524. Okay, so now you're going to add more traffic. Uh, fine, you have traffic studies. Okay, we all know, Mr. Walsh already, I'm sorry, Mayor Walsh already mentioned about the engineering mishap, the millions of dollars that was spent on the bypass for the exit onto Howell Road, which never opened. So we know about engineering mishaps and a lot of money that has been spent. Mm -hmm. So I can say that there will be traffic engineers that maybe they're not there for the right time of the day or if there's an accident and Route 33 is closed, which it has been numerous times between Howell Road and Fairfield Road because there was a, a terrible car accident. Okay, this does need to be taken into consideration. I bought on that end of Vanderveer Road for a reason, because it was semi-rural. That's why I moved from the other part of Howell. I've lived in Howell for 22 years. Okay, you are I don't disagree with the application. I don't disagree with the fact that this is necessary and it is a good idea. Fairfield Road is not the place for it. Maybe down a little further on 33. I don't know about zoning, what should be where. I don't know about that stuff. That's not my job. That's your job. Okay, and you've heard from enough people that live in this area. The gentleman that just spoke before me, the people that it's going to impact are the people that live in the area. I live in that area. This will impact me. This will impact the people that live on Baker Road and Fairfield Road. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys need to take into consideration the fact, what is the ramifications of changing this zone? What is that going to do to the rest of the town? Okay, because once you open Pandora's box to all these other so-called developers that may want to come to Howell, then what do you have? You don't have a precedence to say no. Uh, th that's up for... Other discussions, I mean. But once you set yeah, but the that's precedence. All, well, uh, okay, you, you know we can we can all look at any. But so I just we can all look at any situation <clears throat> and say, well, now that made everything black. And, and I, I, there's validity in some of the things that you just said for sure. But it doesn't mean okay. doing one thing makes a, a ball go down a hill. Well, uh, you're, it, absolutely, just a, you're absolutely right. Uh, so okay. if people, a lot of people have been up here talking about traffic. I'm going to talk about traffic from my perspective of living on Vanderveer Road. Sure. Not an engineer who comes there between uh, 2 and 3 in the afternoon. Okay, so that's my perspective of what happens with traffic 
okay? And I will say, you're going to put quite a few small businesses in Howell that are taxpayers out of